What's up guys, today we're going to be talking about the Siege of Ruby Ridge. This case is, in my opinion, one of the more interesting true crime cases, and I don't know why it's not talked about more. And I should make a general disclaimer that this video is just a summary, and I may leave out some facts due to time constraints. If you find this video interesting and want more information on Ruby Ridge, you should definitely go check out Windigoon's video because it's very good and has a lot of information. I should also say that I don't condone the beliefs or actions of pretty much anyone involved in the story. The story of Ruby Ridge all starts with this man, Randy Weaver. Randy Weaver was a very radical, conservative Christian who kind of just wanted to be left alone and live off the land. He was a big believer that we were in the end times and that the government was the beast described in the Bible. It should also be mentioned that Randy Weaver was a devout Nazi and often associated with groups like the Aryan Nation. The trouble all started when Randy Weaver was approached by two ATF agents who posed as members of the Aryan Nation and asked him if he could help them manufacture short-barreled shotguns. Now, short-barreled shotguns are very illegal, but Randy Weaver needed the money and agreed to help them. So when he gave them the guns they asked for, he was promptly arrested and taken to jail. He posted bail and agreed to return for his trial, but somehow he got the wrong date for the trial and never showed up. And because he failed to appear in court, a warrant was issued for his arrest. At this time, Randy Weaver was living on top of a mountain called Ruby Ridge, which was in a very rural area. Area. So ATF agents decided that they needed to raid Ruby Ridge to arrest Randy Weaver. Now it's important to mention that at this time, Randy Weaver had no idea there was a warrant for his arrest. He thought his court date was still in the future and had no idea that ATF agents were coming to raid his house. So Randy's son is walking on the property one day with his dog when suddenly a man in full camo stands up and shoots the dog. Now at this time, Randy's son has no idea that this is actually an ATF agent. He just thinks it's some guy in camo who shot his dog. What happens next is widely disputed, but a gunfight broke out which led to the death of Randy's son and an ATF agent. When Randy and his family heard the gunshots, they panicked because they still didn't know the ATF was raiding their compound. They just thought it was some guys in camo that were messing with them. Randy quickly retrieved his son's body, and while he was putting it in the back shed, he was shot by an ATF sniper. Randy quickly ran back to the house, and his wife opened the door for him while holding their baby so he could get inside faster. As Randy was re-entering the house, the sniper shot again and killed his wife. And remember, he still doesn't know that this is the ATF, he just thinks it's some random people trying to kill him. Eventually, the ATF were able to get in contact with Randy Weaver and he came out of his house and surrendered 11 days later. Personally, I believe that Randy Weaver deserved whatever he got because he was a Nazi, but keep in mind his wife and his son were totally innocent and lost their lives. And after this whole horror ordeal, the only crimes they were able to convict Randy of was a weapons charge and failure to appear in court. There are a lot of conflicting opinions on Ruby Ridge, so make sure to drop your opinions in the comments. I'm really trying to make this YouTube channel an interactive community where we can discuss interesting cases like this one. I mostly just made this video to practice talking to the camera, but I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you can see more videos like this in the future. Thanks for watching.